Tom Lund as... Johnny Dollar. Get dressed, Johnny. How fast can you get to the airport? Well, 30 minutes if I finish breakfast and 10 if I don't. They'll give you something to eat on the plane. Where am I going? South Bend, Indiana. Washington Research Hospital. They were robbed last night. $150 worth of gold. You're pretty excited about a claim that size, aren't you? We were right to be. The gold is what they call an isotope, used for experimental purposes. Highly radioactive. Whoever stole it is carrying potential death around with him. Well, I guess the airline's coffee is better than mine anyway. I'll see you, Ed. Account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to Home Office, Corinthian Insurance Company, Hartford, Connecticut. The following is an accounting of expenditures during my investigation of the radioactive gold matter. Expense account item one, fifty-two dollars and seventy-five cents, airfare and incidentals between Hartford and South Bend, Indiana. Expense account item two, one dollar and forty cents, cab fare out to Washington Research Hospital. Dr. Reed McKinlock was in charge of the radiological laboratories. It's impossible to overemphasize the seriousness of the situation, Mr. Dollar. An extremely lethal weapon is loose somewhere in the city of South Bend. Would you mind explaining what this gold is, Doctor, and why it's so deadly? It's what we call a radioactive isotope. That means the gold's been exposed to an atomic pile until it becomes highly radioactive. We use it here as well as a number of other isotopes in the treatment of certain malignancies. Uh Uh-huh. Now, what form does it come in, Doctor? Both gold leaf and needles, depending on whether we wish to employ solutions or a direct injection. Now, what kind of protection do you have against its radioactivity when it's not in use? Well, all our isotopes are kept in small glass vials, which are in turn kept in small lead boxes. When not in active use, we place them in a lead vault in our laboratory. And are the other isotopes missing? No, just the gold, which means there couldn't have been much of a profit motive in the theft. Why not, Doctor? Well, we only had four ounces of the gold. So there was a metal that wasn't worth too much. And as an isotope, others such as carbon-14 or iron-55 are three times as valuable. Mm -hmm. Any other reason for anyone taking it? Outside of its value in research and healing, it's practically worthless. I can't possibly conceive of any reason for its theft. All my staff have been with me for some time. According to Dr. McKinlock, the radioactive gold had been used on a patient the day before, placed in the vault that night, and a laboratory technician had discovered its loss at 8 o'clock in the morning. Apparently, whoever had taken it was unaware of its lethal properties. The protective lead box had been left behind. Doris Floria, the lab technician, added one more bit of information. I, I, I can't help thinking it's all my fault, Mr. Dollar. I'm the one that's responsible. Well, why is that, Miss Floria? Well, one of my duties here is to check the vault each evening, make sure all the isotopes have been replaced, and then close and lock it. Well, didn't you do that last night? Oh, yes. At least I thought I did. You thought you did? But I came in this morning to unlock the vault. It it was partially open. Apparently, I hadn't locked it last night. Well, we all make mistakes, Miss Floria. Yes. But not as deadly as this one's likely to be. Expense account item three, one dollar and seventy-five cents. Cab fare to police headquarters. I figured I'd better find out what the police were doing about things. Lieutenant Alito's told me. They've been working pretty fast, Mr. Dollar, trying to cover every possible angle. Fairly intangible thing to work on, though, a few flecks of gold in a glass jar. Some pretty deadly flecks, Lieutenant. How are you doing with the hospital personnel? We're checking them out as fast as we can. I haven't come up with anything so far. What about Doris Floria's story? Could have happened as she said. Failure to lock the vault door tightly. Either that or it was opened by somebody who knew the combination. No signs of forced entry. I suppose you've notified the newspapers and radio stations. Yeah. Yeah, they're giving us complete coverage. Scare headlines, spot broadcast every 15 minutes. We have to do something to let this guy know he's committing suicide by carrying that stuff around. Yeah, that goes for anybody who might come in contact with him, too. I made a copy of the lieutenant's list of all the hospital employees who might have had access to the vault room during the hours of 8 p.m. to 8 a.m. Then I started back for the hospital to recheck. I was still looking for a cab outside of police headquarters when Lieutenant Doritos came hurrying out of the building and changed my plan of action. Better forget the cab and come along with me, Dollar. Why, what happened, Lieutenant? We sent out a flyer to all the pawn shops, precious metal buyers and cops. A fellow by the name of Gus Parker called in. Owns a helpful friend, collateral company on South Water Street. He just caught one of the radio broadcasts. Scared him to death. He bought that hot gold at 10.30 this morning. I'm glad 
glad to see you, Lieutenant. Oh, I'm plenty glad. Oh, you know? Yes, first time, Parker. No, that's no way to talk, Lieutenant, just because we had a few, well, uh, kind of disagreements. Don't mean we're not friends. I'm doing you a good turn right now to prove it. Hey, <laughs> ain't I? Yeah, I'll believe it when I see the proof. Yeah, Parker. oh, the proof he's in. Oh, that atom gold stuff. That's what I got for proof. <laughs> Maybe my dead body would be proof enough for you. How do you know it's the radioactive gold, Mr. Parker? Well, how do I know? Yes, uh, gold leaf. It said on the radio, didn't it? Gold leaf and needles. Maybe four ounces. That's what it said, didn't it? Yeah, yeah, that's what it said. Okay, so this guy comes into my place at 10.30 this morning. The gold leaf he's got. Three troy ounces of it. And he wants to sell. And so I buy. Like an idiot, I, I should have hit him over the head. I should have shot him. But like an idiot, I buy. Did he tell you where he got the gold? Oh, sure, yes, he told me. Oh, yeah, would you think I buy gold without asking? Off in the windows in his place of business, he said. He had a big television store. He went broke, so he scraped the gold leaf off the windows. And that's when he came to peddle to me. He said, oh, that liar. I should have shot him. Well, it's three troy ounces, a lot of leaf to scrape off the store windows. Well, so maybe he had a big store, lots of windows. How do I know? Well, that's what he told me, so I bought this stuff. Where is it, Parker? It's back there. It's laying on the counter in the back there. Don't ask me to take you over there. I'm not getting within 15 feet of that stuff. Three troy ounces of atom bomb. I, I wouldn't get within 15 feet of that. Let's take a look with him, huh? That's gold leaf, all right. Clean, too. Wasn't scraped off any store window. How do you bring it in, Parker? A glass jar? But he has stuff in an envelope. A paper envelope. Yeah, I've got the whole store full of that Adam stuff. Now my counter, the scale. Mm, get it out of here. Get it. I've got a lead box in the car, I'll have to put it in there and have it off to the check. Yeah, okay, Lieutenant. Mr. Parker, you got a record of the man who brought the gold in? Well, yeah, sure, I got it. It's right here in my book. Wait a minute, let me see how um... Oh, yes, here it is. John Jones, 625. Uh, Florney, Flor... Flournoy, 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 Street. John Jones, huh? So that's the name he gave me. What am I going to do, call him and a liar to his face? Oh, oh, say, listen, mister, that gold. What do you think it's that atom stuff? We'll find that out at the hospital. Yeah, well, you let me know, won't you? This got me plenty worried. Maybe I'm dying from it right now. You... Well, why don't you come with us and let him check you over? Uh, oh, now, how am I going to do that? Three hours to close him yet. Customers will come in here. After all, a fellow's got to make a buck, you know. <laughs> We put the gold leaf into the lead box with the help of some sugar tongs that Parker had around, called the hospital to tell him we were on the way, and drove down. Dr. McKinlock was in one of the x-ray rooms taking some plates when we walked in. Okay, Steve, that'll do it. That is all picture, doctor. That's it, Steve. You can put your shirt on now. Stop by tomorrow afternoon. We'll have the plates developed by then, and I'll let you know. You think everything be all right, Doctor? Nothing bad wrong. Everything be all right. It's my job to worry about these things, Steve, not yours. So run along, give that lovely bride of yours a kiss for me, will you? <laughs> I know she likes that, Doctor. You wait till I tell her. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for everything. Wait till I tell my Anna. <laughs> she likes it. Oh, sorry I had to keep you waiting. I wanted to be sure to get those plates on Steve Rojack today. Suspected malignancy. You think you have the gold? We're not sure, Doctor, but we've got some pure gold leaf. Well, let's check and see. I have a Geiger counter over here. And now, if you'll step back. Yeah, sure. Did you uh, get the man who had this? Not yet. Well, if this is hot, don't waste any time getting him down here. There may be still a chance to save his life. I'll pass the counter over now and increase the intensity of the clicking, and we've got it. If there's not, well, let's see. Well, there's your answer, gentlemen. Yeah, looks like we start again from scratch. Progress came to a complete standstill. Somewhere in the city of South Bend, a man or woman was dying from radiation. But no one had responded to the notices in the papers nor to the radio broadcast. Around 10 o'clock that night, I decided to call it quits and checked into the South Bend Hotel for some much-needed sleep. During the night, my plans were rudely interrupted. Oh. <coughs> Johnny Dollar. Oh, I'm sorry to disturb you, Mr. Dollar. This is Dr. McKinlock. Can you come down here to the hospital right away? At 2.30 in the morning? Why? Well, it's our laboratory technician, Doris Floria. Uh, she came in here 
here about 20 minutes ago in an advanced state of hysteria. She's under the impression she's dying from radiation poisoning. We bring you the second act of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar. Well, you made good time getting here, Mr. Dollar. Well, I wasn't going to waste any after what you told me. Where's Miss Floyd? She's one of the treatment rooms down this way. That's what happened, Doctor. She came into the hospital at 1.50 a.m., sobbing and moaning rather incoherently about dying from radiation poisoning. When the resident on duty called me, I came down, gave her a sedative, and put in the call to you. Uh-huh. Oh, this is the room, Mr. Dollar. I've already made a preliminary examination. Did you find anything? The slight but very definite radioactivity spread generally over her body. Of course, the counter shows any contamination almost immediately, but the secondary symptoms usually take 8 to 14 days to make their appearance. Uh-huh. Okay, let's talk to her. Doris. Oh. It's Dr. McKinlock, Doris. I've told you all I know. I'm guilty. You know I'm guilty. Why don't you take me away? We want to ask you a few questions, Doris. I've told you everything I know. I'm guilty. What more do you have to know? What are you guilty of, Doris? Taking the radioactive gold? I'm careless. Incompetent. I don't deserve to be a technician here. Can't you understand that? I should be punished, not questioned. Punished. How are you careless? By exposing yourself to radiation? Yes. Yes. What do you think I've been telling you? Night after night, having to take all that time, using the shields, the tongs, to put the isotopes away... Wasting time. Wasting time. Well, you've been shortcutting the safety procedures. Is that it, Doris? You haven't been following the safety rules? I just told you that, didn't I? Careless. Incompetent. Now I'm dying. And I deserve to die. Be punished. Why, Doris? Did you take the gold? Take it? Take the gold? Yes, did you take the gold from the vault? No. No, I didn't take it. Who said I took it? I wouldn't steal. Well, then why are you guilty, Doris? What did you do? The vault. Night before. I did close it. Locked it tight. But the gold. What about the gold, Doris? It wasn't in the lab. I left it out on the treatment room. I forgot all about it. Left it out there. For anybody to take. Anybody. Why don't you punish me for that? I'm guilty. Why don't you punish me? had done was to throw our field of suspects wide open. Lieutenant Aritos was a far from happy man when I gave him that information the next morning. Uh, that's all I had to hear this morning, Dollar. That's all I needed to finish the topping for the stuff. What stuff, Lieutenant? The result of those newspaper and radio stories. Every crank in town is beginning to call him. Look, this fellow claims his neighbor's got the radioactive gold. How does he know? Because the guy's a spy. Right now he's building a hydrogen bomb with her out in the backyard. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Here's one from a gold buyer out on the west side. He bought the stuff last night. He's sure of it. Only it turns out he's got a half a dozen gold-plated tie on it. That's where it's been going, Dollar. We've got to check them out one by one. Yeah, policemen often tell me that a policeman's life is not a happy one. I know an insurance investigator wasn't doing too well either. Hmm. No comment, Lieutenant. Mm-hmm. Where are you going from here, Dollar? Out to the hospital. No place else to go. Maybe we missed something down the line there. I doubt it. Yeah, so do I, but i got to do something. 24 hours have gone by. Yeah. Haven't gotten very far, have we? The squad car gave me a lift back to the hospital, and I went into the questioning routine again. I was studying the very negative results of my handiwork when Dr. McKinlock brought me some interesting information. Remember that patient I had in here yesterday, Mr. Dollar, Steve Rojack? 
Rojack? I was giving him some X-ray tests when you and Lieutenant Doritos came in. Oh, yeah, the one you thought might have a malignancy. Well, we gave him a tracer dose of phosphorus 32 last night, and I was going to check him with his portable counter. But while I was carrying it down the corridor just now, the counter became activated. You mean there's some radioactivity out in the corridor right now? That's right. Well, where is it coming from, Doctor? I'll show you. Now, this is a pretty sensitive instrument. Don't let the volume of its activity concern you. I'll take your word for it. This is the maximum intensity right here. Well, there's nothing in the corridor to produce that. What's over there? A utility cabinet? That's right. Let's look inside. There it is. Yeah. A rubbish cart. The kinds of reporters and orderlies push around. And it's contaminated. Could that have happened if somebody had carried a radioactive substance hidden inside? It could. Huh. Now all we have to do is figure out who used it. I'm afraid that's in your problems rather than in mine, Mr. Dollar. While Dr. McKinlock prepared the cart for decontamination, I put a call through to Lieutenant Oritos and gave him the names and addresses of all hospital porters and orderlies who'd been on duty the night of the robbery. He had them all down at the hospital within an hour. Then Dr. McKinlock began to test each man for radioactive contamination at the Geiger counter. Just uh, step up here, Brandon. That's right. Now, stand still. That's all, Brandon. Thank you. Hartley, will you step up, please? That's right. Now, stand still. Okay, Hartley, thank you. Schweigert, you're next. That's right. Now, stand right there, please. Okay, Schweigert, thank you. Dobson, you're next. The entire process took a little less than 20 minutes. Not once did that little black box with its flashing light and irregular clicking show the slightest interest in anyone it was introduced to. My bright idea turned out to be a complete flop. Expense account item four, $12.35. Cab fares and miscellaneous during the rest of that day. I divided my time between the hospital and police headquarters and came up with nothing. At 7.30 that night, I was sitting at the hotel bar wondering whether to wire in my resignation right then or wait till I got back to Hartford when I got a phone call from Lieutenant Oritos. I'll pick you up outside in a couple of minutes, darling. Why, what's up? I have our first victim of radiation poisoning from that gold. Yeah, who is it? An eight-year-old boy named Bobby Thatcher. His mother just brought him into the hospital. What makes you think he's been exposed? She found him playing with a little glass bottle with suspected of gold at the bottom of it. The label said Washington Research Hospital. Bobby just has to be all right. There's no sense in getting yourself all upset before we hear the report, Mrs. Thatcher. We're not sure that Bobby was exposed to any radiation. Oh, Mr. Dolly, you know better than that, and so do I. The radio broadcasts were clear enough. Bobby was exposed. I'm only praying that I caught it in time. But the radiation won't have caused too much damage. I suppose you tell us just what happened. Well, it was about 7 o'clock tonight. Bobby was playing out in the backyard after dinner. He was getting time for his bath, so I went out to bring him in. That's when I found him playing with the glass bottle. For a minute, I was stunned. I I didn't know what to do. What did you do, Mrs. Thatcher? Well, I knew I had to get Bobby to the hospital immediately, and I knew you people would want to see the bottle. So I put the bottle in an old tin can. I wrapped the whole thing in newspaper, put it in the luggage compartment of the car, and drove Bobby right down. Do you have any idea where he got the bottle, Mrs. Thatcher, where it came from? I asked him that on the way down. He said he found it in the neighbor's yard. What neighbor is that? Oh, there's an elderly couple lives next door to us. We don't have a fence between the two properties, and Bobby wandered over there. I guess he found the bottle and brought it back. What are the neighbors' names? Oh, Lieutenant, I don't want to get them in trouble. I'm sure they couldn't have had anything to do with it. They're such a kindly old couple. We'll have to have the names, Mrs. Thatcher. But to disturb them now about something they couldn't possibly be connected with, it would be a terrible pity. Why is that? They're going to have a party tonight to celebrate their 50th wedding anniversary. The whole neighborhood's going to be there. It would be terrible to disturb them on a night like this. You're pretty disturbed about your son, Mrs. Thatcher. There may be other people who are disturbed in the same way. Yes, I suppose you're right. And you could go out there and find out anyway. Well, they're uh, Mr. and Mrs. Stephen Rojack. We made a check of the hospital records on Rojack before we started out. 
They showed that Stephen Rojack had been admitted for treatment at 7.45 p.m. the night of the robbery and had remained there undergoing tests for approximately two and a half hours. Something I can do for you? You, Mr. Rojak? Yeah, ah, that's right. Stephen Rojak. I'm Lieutenant Arito. This is Mr. Dollar. We'd like to ask you a few questions. Lieutenant, you say? Then you are from police. That's right. Ah, it is too bad. Too bad. What is, Mr. Rojak? That this should happen tonight, but you should find out now when is our 50th wedding anniversary. Yeah, too bad. Can we come in, Mr. Rojak? If you do not mind, Lieutenant, my wife, Anna, she does not know. Could we talk in back in my workshop? Yeah, that'll be all right. Thank you. Thank you. Do you know why we're here, Mr. Rojak? Yeah, yeah, I know. It is about gold. You took it from the hospital? Yeah, I took it, Mr. Dollar. That rubbish cart I used it to take to the door, then in my pocket. Where is it now, Rojak? Is back here, Lieutenant, in my workshop. In here, gentlemen, please. Thanks. I will get the light for you. Ah, so. Now, what did you wish to ask me, gentlemen? Why'd you take the gold, Mr. Rojak? <laughs> that is such a simple question, Lieutenant. It's had so hard to answer. You must have had a reason. Reason? Yeah. Fifty years of reason, Mr. Gullet. You're talking about your wife? My Anna. For 50 years we've been together, Anna and me, like that one person you become in 50 years. I understand you. You raise children, have good time, have bad, like like one person that make you. Yeah, we understand. Now, now comes time of celebration, the, the anniversary. Golden time it is to be in. That is what I wanted from my Anna. Golden time, golden present. Look oh, yeah. here. I will show you. I have it here in my room. Don't touch it, Rojak. But why should I not pretend? It's nothing but gold. I have been working with it almost constantly for two days now. There. You see, gentlemen, what I have made? Two golden rings. Two gold rings with design in them. A design which, when they are placed so, joins them both together. You made the rings out of the gold, huh? Hmm? Golden present for Anna. And on a golden anniversary. Ah, I know it was the wrong thing to do with taking the gold, but, but when I saw it there in the hospital on the table, I knew what I had to do. To make this for Anna. You've been working with that gold for two days? Hmm? Two days, right. Haven't you read any papers in that time? Listened to any radio broadcasts? Oh, I'm sorry. I do not read in English. And radio, we do not have. Yeah, I see. I, I was going to pay back for the gold. After my treatment, I was going to pay back. And I will pay. Yes, Mr. Rojak. You will. <laughs> Expense account item five, forty two dollars and twenty cents, hotel bill and miscellaneous. Expense account item six, fifty five dollars, airfare and incidentals back to Hartford. Expense account total. $165.45. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar.